And let's jump into the Q&A and go into it. Ah, this is interesting. CryptoCure says chain analysis, 10 to 15% of transit are illicit. Every major bank's been caught doing so much worse. Well, that's true. Just they want to, I think what it is, is control. You know, once you have a lot of control, it's hard to let go of control. So, of course, these governments and, and uh, sectors of different governmental organizations, they want to have that control because it's hard to give those things up. And how do we do that? Well, we ban those things that are hard to track. I got to tell you, if I was in the, in the government, I would have welcomed crypto a long time ago. It's so much easier to track on-chain transactions than it is with money. I'm just saying it is. Uh, let's see. Michael says, anyone else sweat coin app lagging? Yeah, they had this new update, which I didn't update yet, but apparently the update's causing the um, apps to lag. So see if they can fix that quick. No idea. <laughs> Corey says it right. Uh, say I don't want my ex-wife to know every transaction I made and someone doxed my address. True. Here's the next question. I know people say, I got nothing to hide, I got nothing to hide, but really think about that before you answer this next question, which is if everybody could see all your transactions, like Corey said, let's say your wallet, 0x, blah, 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 554, blah, 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 gets put out on the internet. So this is Corey's address. Corey doesn't realize that it's, he's being doxxed. And people come across that and say, oh, well, Corey bought a bunch of Beanie Babies. I don't know. And he works at a strict anti beanie baby factory like sorry Corey, we have a, a a no beanie baby policy you are fired apologize here's your severance package hit the door or let's say Corey buy some weird wacky stuff whatever that is and he's like wow i didn't know Corey was into you know whatever syrup something or other it's just one of those things like people it's amazing people say why well, don't i got nothing to hide until they really think about it come on Everybody's got something to hide. Let's see. When we get our cash, we're screwed. Cam's videos, wrench, please. Next time, Cam's. <laughs> if I get divorced, I'm switching tracers. Did you buy Bitcoin today? I buy it every day now. Uh, I'm just kind of going through the motions. So I'm using FTX and Coinbase and Kraken. And KuCoin. Not for all those things. KuCoin's a little bit different. <laughs> I've been gone since May. What the hell happened? Nothing much. Just people getting arrested. Thomas says, I initially supported the Patriot Act to target just the terrorists, right? That didn't pan out too well. It's one of those things. I see regulations coming just in time, aligning perfect with the next Bitcoin having. The one thing I'm hoping for is that nobody has control in the U.S. Congress. Nobody in Senate, nobody in uh, uh, the House of Reps. So if we have somebody who's in control, they can just start pushing through all the legislation that they want. Sometimes it's good to have uh, a little bit of debate and try to find what's good for both parties. Mm. Rob, polka dot stable coin, yeah. That's true. The problems with the regulators, they don't know what they want. The field is growing and getting more creative. I think it's a power struggle. I think Gary, Gary Gensler and, and the SEC is facing off against the CFTC. So he was going to regulate this part. I hope that they defer to the CFTC. Regulate the developers. Uh, what's Rob's app for Twitter? At News Asset. There's a link in the description. You can find it. Let bad stuff crash and burn. No need to involve the government. They would have propped up Luna artificially and needed to die. Yeah, that's true. You know, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, I know everybody lost their money, though. That's the problem with Luna. So many people lost their money. And it's like, once you get through one thing, 
it's like another thing pops up that screws everybody over. And then once we figure that out, then another thing pops up that screws everything over. I got to tell you, I, I do understand why Bitcoin maximalists are Bitcoin maximalists. And even Ethereum. Like, has anybody hacked Ethereum? I mean, parts of the ecosystem, sure. So why not? Has anybody hacked Cardano? I mean, parts of their ecosystem doesn't, don't really work perfectly all the time, but it's always up, always works, hasn't ever been down. Solana? Nah, I'm just kidding. Of course, Solana's been down. All right. That doesn't mean it can't be awesome. I get you. Uh, they're moving it to dump after the merge, I support. ETH? Yeah. Look, remember when smart contracts came through for Cardano? It was a great, great time. Great day. Mainnet launch, even before that. Uh, there's a big run-up, and then phew, dumps out. So even if you think it's the, it's the future, you might think it's the future. It probably might be. But it doesn't stop people from taking mass amounts of profit. I still see it as a buy the rumor, sell the news. <laughs> Am I freezing? Shoot. It is hot in here. I forgot my chill pad. Any follow up with Meld? Whatever happened with staking NFTs? I thought you could still stake those on, on the uh, platform. Not for sure. Let me reach out to the to them. Do you use any credit debit card during cashback? I do. I have a couple credit cards for my different businesses. Works out pretty well. It's hard to pay in crypto everywhere. Whoa. As a result of TC, okay, this is terms and conditions, DAI wants to drop its USDC. What are your thoughts about DAI and its proposed move from USDC? Your thoughts about VB's response to it as well? Thanks, Rob. Don't know exactly what the response was, but that would be a nice big shakeup as far as DAI kicking off USDC because of all the shutdowns. But remember, it's not that USDC shut down these different wallets. Tether does the same thing. And that's a fact. So, I mean, if DAI wants to be its own thing, to be its own thing. Do you own XRP? I do. Not that much, but I do. Probably would have gone up a lot more if uh, SEC wouldn't have sued Ripple. Yeah, Andrew says, you don't need privacy until you do. At that point, it's too late. Yes, exactly. Guess I'll have to stop ordering off those late night sex infomercials. Those still a thing? Eh. <clears throat> exactly. Beanie Babes and Syrup. Now that's a good one. Matt 582 says, I want to see what the government spends our tax on. Wouldn't that be amazing if everything was on the blockchain and you could see all the tax dollars and where it goes to? I bet you anything in the name of national security, America, wherever you're, wherever you're at throughout the world, would probably say, because of national security, we're going to use a mixer to uh, pay for our, our different prospects if we ever went just straight, straight crypto. Or as far as like uh, decentralized uh, finance, then all of a sudden it would be okay for the government to do it, but not you. Winter says, when's the next meetup in Puerto Rico? When we get back, probably in September, October. I'm trying to avoid the hurricane season as much as possible. Dollar cost average. Eh. Rob, what's your thoughts on Alex Shinsky swapping 30,000 worth of his sell token ETH? I saw the article, I think it was like 20, 28,500 and something dollars, something like that. Whatever. Uh, I think there's going to be bigger, bigger things coming out of what those sell tokens and when they were sold and things like that. That's the whole point of Chapter 11. Everything gets opened up. And that will be interesting. The only thing I have to hide is my anger towards Voyager. Yeah. Voyager and Celsius. Boy, everything works great until it doesn't, right? I talked about Celsius a lot. I talked about Voyager a lot. And then, of course, when I once I figured it out, 
that uh, Celsius was just doing the wrong things. I remember I did that video on June 12th after I came back from a consensus. And then like nine hours, I said, hey, there's something going on. I'm taking my money off Celsius. You do whatever you want to do, but something's not adding up. And then nine hours later, boom, everything gets shut off. Did the same thing with Voyager on June 22nd. When, once I figured out that they did an uncollateralized loan to three arrows capital. And then that was in June 22nd and then July 1st, shut off transactions. So Alex is in his prison, probably, maybe, I don't know. Everything's going to come out in Chapter 11. <laughs> I think the reason Cardano hasn't been hacked is the same as Apple's OS. It's not worth it. Basel, yeah. There was a little bit of pushback, but I think it's still going on. Rob, what's the best way to store Solana Cobalt? Ledger. Let's see. Are you kidding me? Are you in favor of potential Celsius clawback? No, jeez, crap me. So this is the thing that's going on. Celsius is saying, well, since you guys gave us total access to your crypto in our terms of service, if you took your crypto back within 90 days, then we're gonna claw that back. First of all, good luck getting that. Good luck getting that from everybody. I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean, if it does, that'd be, they'd be the most hated death threats, I would say. So if that happens, I don't think, it, first of all, I think it's going to happen, but there's no way that they could, they can or should do that. Celsius clawback. Question, what's the true definition of alt season, Rob? Eh, people think, people have a theory that everything goes through, everything starts with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, pumps up a little bit, alts don't do too much. And the money that is in Bitcoin, people take profits off that. It flows into alts into the top 20 or so. Think of like Ethereum and uh, uh, Solana and Cardano and Polkadot, those types of things. Then it flows down even farther into the 50 to 100s and then like to the low cap gems that are out there. And that's when they say alt season is. So it always start, everything always starts with Bitcoin. So just remember that. But um, some people say that all season is right now, like over Ian, over at Token Metrics, he's got a, they've got a, a graph which, which they hypothesize that it's all season right now. Sure. Or you could be like Ben over in the Cryptoverse and he believes that uh, we're still going still to see some major downslide. And that means that after that happens, then we'll have the all season. But he says, if you buy right now, it's just going to keep going lower. I don't know. So for me, I just hedge my bet. I go, okay, I'm not going to go all in right now, but I'll just slowly dollar cost average just like I did in 2018, 19, and 20 and do the same thing I did three years ago, four years ago and just wash, rent, rinse, and repeat. And just wait. That's it. So. Uh, Kevin just went down in my book. Yeah. Hey, Rob, you know, Empower, another car project after they partner with OMT for now. I know I reached out to them. Maybe I'll have them on the show at some point. It's like a pretty good project. And uh, if you haven't watched yesterday's video, it's a good one. It's fast forward all the crappy uh, lag internet part. Just go to the, just go to the interview with me and Mickey. It's great stuff. Okay, MVOS asked me like 30, 30 times. Pot Queen B, any chance to get a rancher? Next time. Someone's gonna listen to Gareth Soloway. Gareth Soloway thinks we're going to 12,000. I don't think we're going that low. Ben's thinks we're going, Ben doesn't know. Ben's, I mean, Ben's got a, got, got a theory. No one knows for sure, but uh, he thinks we're going below he is going to blow up, go below 20 again. And he thinks that, uh, and, all, and honestly, if you just look at history, let me show you this. And we, we talked about this yesterday. Da, 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 da. Where'd it go? Here it is. If you just look at history, 
usually, not all the time, but last, I believe in the four-year cycle. So that uh, the first cycle, the top was 1,127 and it went down to 172. And it took almost two years. November 2013, January 2015. And it went down 80, 85%. Then the next one, and remember, two years from the all-time high. Two years. That was 2013 to 2015. The next one, a little bit shorter, about a year. Uh, so the all-time high in 2017 was 19, almost 20,000. The all-time, the low for that cycle was $3,200 in December 2018. So a year. And then this one, I mean, if you think this is right, the high for this cycle was 67,000. Does anybody think we're gonna go higher than 67,000 the next year and a half until the next cycle starts with the 2024 halving? Neither do I. The, the lowest price was 19,047. That's what CoinGecko says. It might've been 174 because I remember going to 174. I do. That's only 75%. And that's not that, that's not that long. It's like eight months. So remember, it took with a year, two years, eight months, we're only at 71 or 75%. So I don't know. Maybe we could go lower. Just something to think about before you start selling your kids and kidneys to, to buy more crypto. Uh, Corona time. Are we live? We're live. 2,500K? I think so. How does <laughs> how does Schiff go through an asset seizure and still trash Bitcoin? I don't know. He's got a nice bank in Puerto Rico, I think it was, or it's incorporated in Puerto Rico. I guess they wouldn't let him do a sale or something. Now that's another one to go. Jing Chow says it's it's for good intentions on money laundering, but I feel tornado swaps should be highly regulated instead of a ban. If they worry on money laundering, ban cash and push Grayscale Bitcoin digital cash part of the plan. It's a good thought. But that's that's just it. How do you how do you highly regulate a, a mixer? You know, I remember there was this there was an interview with um, crypto call him crypto dad, Giancarlo. He was the former head of the CFTC. And he said, look, we can do a digital dollar in one of two ways. We can go just like the digital yuan and have everything uh, like nanny state and have you know, the US government spy on everybody and just use it like that. But what's the difference between that and the digital uh, yuan? There's no difference. It's the same thing. And it's, uh, it's oppressive. He goes, or we can go to a digital dollar and make it private. I know what people are saying. How the hell are they going to do that? Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm just telling you that's what he said. But wouldn't that be interesting if they could do it like a digital? Here's a question for everybody. If you could get a digital dollar and it was more like Monero, where it was just a privacy transaction, would you go for it? Or would you be like, nope, <laughs> it's never going to be private? I think that'd be interesting. I do not read paid comments, but if you're going to pay me, I'll, pay, I'll read them. Eric says, Rob, with Voidra, what are you using for a fiat on-ramp? I got four. Well, I got three. I use uh, Coinbase, FTX, and uh, Kraken. And they're all, uh, since I'm an American, that's pretty much what, I'm, what I got. So that's it. And then if, if I want to find hard to buy things, I use uh, KuCoin. But I can't be a, I don't think that's a fiat on-ramp for me. Voidra News, uh, I'll do a video on that. There's a second day, second day hearing with some more information that was put out. Not a second day hearing. It was um, the uh, the Voyager Committee for uh, independent investors like you and me. Um, I'll do a video on it later. It was just pretty good information about the financials. Joby says, I don't think we'll see anywhere anywhere close to 70K. Probably not. Huh. 
I wouldn't mind having some Monero without a, caring about a price appreciation. Neither would I. How great would that be? It'd be great. Everyone went from, ah, that's a good question. So O says everyone from uh, bull run extending, even me, I thought, ah, there's no way that Bitcoin peaked at 69,000 or 67,000. I thought it was gonna be extended cycles. Didn't work out, four year cycles came to be the truth. Uh, and 100K, it's everybody, everybody going back to four year cycles and waiting on the sidelines. What do you think the market will do now? I don't know if people are really waiting on the sidelines. Like me, I'm not waiting on the sidelines. This is, again, these are the days that you, I wanna uh, accumulate. I know some people will say, well, Rob, why are you coming now? Because it's going to crash and it's going to go down. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. The same people that said it was going to crash and go down, the same people that said that we're going to have extended cycles. So can you trust that? And no one knows. So why don't you just make it easy on yourself and go, well, humans are pretty emotional creatures. So maybe I'm just going to dollar cost average and just stick it in there and then give myself a three-year time horizon and just go from there. Simple. I don't see why people make it so difficult. Ah, strike was quick and easy. Uh, yeah, I have it on my phone. I just have, there's limits to strike. I think I have to do some kind of like KYC process to get uh, higher buy points. Robin says, is there a point where you stop DCing? Yeah, when things get overheated, which is a great question when you stop DCing. So look at this. Mm. let's take this one right the pi cycle like i'm just gonna start following this one the net unrealized profit and loss and then also the third one is ben's into the his website into the cryptoverse which i can't show you because it's a paid website but i do talk about it in another video i was telling you does everybody know where to find that video i keep blabbering about but not showing okay let me show you so there's this website, it's 100% free. I made it free because not everybody can afford stuff all the time. So, I wonder what happened there. You go there, you sign up, you get in the members area, very simple. And under module three, investing, there's the rules, of course. Why dollar cost average when I stop dollar cost averaging? And this video right here. Have a plan for the 2020 bull run. And there's three indicators I want to use and show you guys. Pi cycle top, NUPL, time and risk, and then the bottom callers. And we go over all these and what they do and how brain dead easy they are to actually use. So go, uh, go check that site out if you haven't already. So to answer your question, when do you stop DCAing? Well, I'm going to take a look at this and say, well, look, once this, let me blow this up. Come on. So here's the thing, the Pi cycle top, nothing's perfect. Zero, zip, nothing's perfect. So let's say you get pretty close to where the price was at 60,000 and you sell out because that's when it says it was. And it was pretty close. It, was, it kept going up though. I think we topped at over here. We topped at 67,000, which was April, or is this? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, no. Like seven months later. So if it goes here, all I'm gonna do is just follow this and go, okay, I'm gonna sell most, not all. I never wanna sell all my crypto because you never know. It could have gone from 63,000 to 100 and, or 250,000, I don't know. So I'm not gonna sell it all. But as it starts to go down and I start to see these two lines, this 111 day moving average, 350 day moving average can separate and it goes down, I probably wanna start buying somewhere, like in all honesty, I probably would have bought a 40,000. And then come back here and go, oh, it's going down. And maybe some other factors I want to look for. Maybe I want to look for an RSI on the monthly, relative strength index. Maybe I want to take a look at some fundamentals. What's going on with crypto? Is there some big institution selling? What's happening that I need to be aware of? And then also, I can also take a look at this. And that un unrealized profit and loss, once it starts to, to cool down, maybe I start to accumulate in this white zone, which would have been a better option. Actually, you know what? This is a better option. 
pi cycle top for the for the tops and also for here as well. Then once it starts to go down here into this green area, then I start accumulating. I, I could have, which I did at 20, what I do? 22,000, 21,000, not too bad. So yeah, just use those two. I'm sure there's a ton of TA people out there screaming at this, at this ring going, no, but you gotta use this indicator and that indicator and da da da. Yes, but I'm not gonna do it. All right, what else we got? <laughs> Beardy, when you use gym socks. That's funny. Maybe John softball soon. Uh, hello, Beardy. Yeah, that's a good point. You end up wrecked with no crypto. And I got to tell you, there's... Mm, no, nah, I'm not going to say because it's going to come off wrong. So I just want to be safe. Just be safe. Not investment advice. Do your own research. Remember the rules. The rules that I put up all the time, meaning that don't invest more than you can afford to lose because it's, it's all gone anyhow. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage. Take some profits. If you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, again, in the website, chapter three, here's a 13 minute video which explains what I'm talking about right there. Okay. You can't see your all in the stable coins, I suppose. Oh, did you guys also hear? There is this uh, documentary coming out on Do Kwan, and he's actually talking, and this was after Do Kwan and the whole Terra Luna debacle and the depegging. Check this out. Uh, you probably want to see what I'm seeing. Here you go. There is this, not this one, this one right here. It must be a product. Uh, let me see if I can. Zach Guzman. Let me put this in. Here, I'll put this into the. So you can find that if you, if you refresh your screen later, you can find this, this video. This looks good. Hold on, you wanna hear it? Hold on. Stop screen, share a tab. Bop, 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 bop. Let me start from the beginning. This is good stuff. And voila. It was supposed to be a stable coin, and it didn't remain stable. It must be a fraud. It must be a scam. When you're talking about life savings being on the line, and it's people putting their money behind the thing that you're building. Like crypto is still sort of like the wild, wild west. I think I developed like sort of an alter ego. Is that tough for you to watch when people play back some of the clips? Cringe, yes. But the algorithm stable stablecoin was starting to become industry standard uh, that big, and I think I lost. What do you point to as kind of the easiest defensive? It's not fraud. The home of Do Kwon's co-founder, Daniel Shin was raided by Korean prosecutors. If it's called a stable coin and its point is to be stable, someone could look at UST and say, this product did nothing. Yeah. Fair but, or not fair? If you were gonna do an investigation and go after the, the top guy, you circle around him and you slowly come in. Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos, saying that, you know, the technology works when she knows it doesn't. Convicted of fraud. People might ask, looking at these facts, like, does that make you an Elizabeth Holmes? Yeah, so there that is. So apparently how this works is you have to get an NFT. I believe it's free. And then uh, it goes to your wallet. Again, 
I don't know. It looks interesting. I don't know if I'm going to connect my wallet to it, but uh, that's what we got. So interesting stuff going on. I might actually watch that. It's a little bit easier to use. All right. Yeah. <laughs> See, it looks like he's lying. It will not be on Netflix. It'll be on uh, a streaming service that you can only get as you connect your MetaMask wallet. And uh, they give you a free NFT, I guess. He does look a little chubby. It's true. Sure. Oh, great. Thanks. I just messaged him, Pawa. That looks like a bum. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a good point. You know what? Let's leave it here. I'm just going to leave it here. He had so many successful moves before Luna failed and he thought he would never lose. And that's a good lesson for all of us. We think just because one crypto that we own went up a 10X or a 50X or 100X that we're infallible and we know exactly what we're doing and uh, we're the greatest investor of all time. Well, that's not how it goes. Just remember that uh, you're gonna lose. Uh, not everything that you're gonna have is gonna be a winner. You just try to minimize the risks that you take and just go from there. And then hopefully at the end of the day, you can have enough profits to take care of you and your family and your bills and maybe get out of the rat race in the matrix. So that's it for today. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for an, almost an hour. Crazy. Uh, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll be back tomorrow. But that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.